All right, listen up. First of all, let me tell you this. You guys did not just find out yesterday that you were coming here to take a police test. You guys have been practicing this and going through the hiring process for a year, two years, and today you showed up with that kind of effort at a police academy? What is wrong with you guys? What do you really believe that the police world is like? You think it's like TV? That's the preparation that you guys put in? That power test is made up so that way it's the bottom of the line, down here. And that's how you guys showed up. Pathetic. I would be embarrassed if I were you showing up on my first day on the job and that's the performance I gave. You are not going to last if that's the performance we're going to get out of you. My name is Watch Commander Bonilla. I'm with the Bloomingdale Police Department. I'm one of the program coordinators here. I'm one of the people who oversee your training to make sure that you get everything that you need. You are now going to be entering the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy. We have some of the finest instructors in Illinois teaching you guys, giving their time to make sure that you're properly trained. Their time is valuable. They owe you nothing. You guys are potential recruits in a police academy. They don't owe you nothing, but you know what they do? They owe our profession everything. And we are the gatekeepers of that profession, and we see who comes through those gates and who doesn't? Who meets our standards and who doesn't? <coughs> That's what we do. No, we don't owe you anything, but we do owe our profession. And you will too one day. We want to make sure that we get the best people that we can possibly get. We make sure that the training that we provide you will help you survive on the street. We take that very seriously because the cost of failure is extremely high. That means somebody gets hurt or killed, not breathing anymore, nothing. You won't see your mommy anymore, you won't see your daddy anymore, you won't see your little puppy anymore, gone. That's what the cost of failure is on this job. We have very high expectations of you. We have to. We have to have those expectations. And we will get that out of you. Let me add that some of these other folks here are staff that give their time to also help you guys out and give you the information you need. These are very important people in your lives right now. Probably some of the most important people in your lives because they were going to help your success at this academy. Your agency has tasked us with training you, and we will train you. We are not going to send them back somebody who is not capable of doing this job. That is a reflection on us, and it is embarrassment on us. We're not going to have that. See, because we don't half-ass this. We put everything we have into this, and we expect the same from you. And if we can't get the same from you, you won't be here. It's that simple. It is that simple. We have a quarter of a century of training behind us, training recruits. 4,000 recruits have graduated from this police academy. We know what we're doing. We know what we're doing when we train recruits. We have guidelines that we have to follow. We have standards that we set for ourselves. Our graduates here 
are the envy of other police academies because of what you get, because of what we provide you. The potential for unlimited achievement when you get back to your police departments, that's what we provide you. With the attitude and effort, commitment that you put into this, that's all on you. You have to be 100% invested in this. 100% every day, even when you don't feel like it, even when you don't feel good. Hard work all the time is what's expected. See, because when you're on the street, you don't get the opportunity to say, hey, I don't feel good, I'm not gonna respond to that call. You don't get that choice. That's too dangerous, I don't wanna go on that call. You don't get that choice. Say, I'm having problems with my family. I don't want to go on that call. No. There are people that depend on you. Society depends on you. We don't just pin that badge on your chest, pat you on the back and say, go get them, kid. It doesn't work like that. You've got to put in the effort. You've got to put in that effort. You have got to be of the highest character, of the highest virtue to do this job. This is a selfless sacrifice. This is no longer about you anymore. It is about who you can serve, your communities. That's who you are serving now. That's who this is for. You are a representative of your police department and your community. That's a big burden on your shoulders for some of you who still live at home with mom and dad in their basement. That's a huge transition, and it doesn't happen overnight. We are tasked into molding you into being that way, but you're gonna have to put in that effort too, because if you don't put in the effort, we're not just gonna give it to you. Not everybody gets a trophy in this business. It doesn't work that way. Some of the things we expect of you are the highest of integrity. You've got to be honest about everything. You've got to be honest about yourself. You've got to be honest when somebody asks you a question. We accept mistakes here. This is training. Mistakes are what it's all about. We learn from our mistakes and we move on. When we make a mistake, we take responsibility for that mistake and then we press on. But if you try to cover it up or lie, you're done in this profession. With that badge comes the assumption of integrity. And once you taint that, it is gone. You can't get it back. You're done. You will never get another police job in, the, in Illinois. Finished. Dependability. We have got to depend on you. You have got to depend on each other. This is no longer an individual effort. This is a team effort now. It will be a team effort for your entire career. We're starting off here. This is where we're learning. You've got to be dependable. Your partners are depending on you. Each of you are gonna to have to depend on each other. Throughout this academy, there's gonna be some tough times. You're gonna to have to help each other out. That means no being late, no being unprepared, because if somebody needs your assistance, again, in our profession, it could cost their life if you are not dependable, if you are not on time. We need you to have courage. We need you to have courage to do what is right. If you see something that is not right and you feel it in your gut, it is your responsibility to say something whether it's taking immediate corrective action right there or reporting it to somebody who can take action. You must have courage in this profession. There's gonna be times where you're going to be afraid. The first time you face that guy who's telling you he's not going back to jail today, you're gonna to be shaking in your boots, but you can't show it. You have to stand fast and do your job. That is having courage. It's okay to be afraid. It's what you do with that fear 
is the courage part. You have to have that. Enthusiasm. Every day you will come here with enthusiasm. We show up here every day with enthusiasm because we know the potential we are facing. You guys are the new police. It is our responsibility to make sure that you're properly prepared. You should be coming here just as enthusi enthusiastic to learn. I don't care where you guys come from. I don't care what your background is. You are all recruits in the police academy. You need to learn to be the police. We are providing that for you. That should be exciting for you. Every day you should be coming in here enthusiastic, not moping around, not looking at the floor with your hands in your pockets. That's not what we want. You see, because you sat there in front of your police fire commissioners telling them how you wanted to do this job so bad, how you wanted to help people. That's what you told them. You were all enthusiastic in front of them. And now some of you are going to think, well, I made it already. I don't have to give that effort. Wrong. It's easy to say that you want to be the police, but you need to show us that you want to be the police. That's where the enthusiasm comes in. Every day that's expected of you. Commitment. You've got to be committed to this job. 100% commitment. You have to give your all, and that doesn't stop at the police academy. It goes on through your careers. However, while you're at the police academy, we expect you to be committed to this job. We didn't force you to do this. We didn't pull you out of bed and drag you here. You chose this. You chose this, and there is a goal that you want to set for yourself at the end. That takes commitment. You've got to give that. We can't force that upon you. We can't make you committed. Commitment means you're not calling in sick anymore. I don't feel like going into work today. I'll just call in sick. That does not fly here. You will not call in sick. You will show up every day ready to train. And lastly, you are going to be learning a lot. You are going to be filled with knowledge. Let me tell you something about knowledge. Knowledge equals confidence in your job. The more you know, the better off you are. You will be learning a lot. You'll be told a lot of different things, and you are required to place that in your toolbox and utilize that for when you need that. The more you know, the more confident you are. That's what people are looking for on the street. You see, because when you show up on those calls for the first time, people are looking at you and they're sizing you up. You may have not had that before in your lives, but now every time you go somewhere, every time you go on a call, people are sizing you up. You show up there without confidence, people are going to run all over you. They're going to run all over you. First impressions are everything in this job. You've got to make a first impression. So far, I've not seen that first impression. Hopefully, in the amount of time that you have off before you come back, you have time to think about that. You have time to think about what we're talking about right now and work on that. Now, you know what our expectations are. There's going to be an occasion where you're going to have to dig deep do some soul searching. You're going to have to find that inner strength, that intestinal fortitude to bring your game every day. Every day. There's going to be a lot of discipline here. I don't care what you've been told about this academy. We expect discipline. We run this place very tight. We have to. Again, the cost of failure is too high. We don't just expect that, we demand it. The other thing we're going to talk about is respect. 
You will have respect for this police academy. You will have respect for this profession. We're not going to tolerate any disrespect. You need to respect each other. There's no harassment. There's no poking fun at people. There's no hazing. You will treat each other with dignity. Most importantly, you will have respect for yourselves. You need to be squared away every day. Not one person in this group can tell me that they don't own a mirror at home. That means before you walk out that door, you look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, am I prepared for today? And I, am I prepared for what lies ahead of me today? That's what you should be asking yourself. Am I squared away? Am I making a good first impression? If you can't answer that question, then you need to re, re prepare yourself. Imagine if we came here and we weren't squared away for, for you. I don't know you guys. I don't owe you anything, but I make sure I'm squared away for you guys. And I work a full-time job at Bloomingdale. I make sure I'm pressed out. My trousers are pressed, my boots are polished, and I'm squared away. Because first impressions are everything. I know that, and I know the value in that. We all know the value in that. You need to learn the value in that. This job is about preparation. Preparation all the time. Mentally, physically preparing. You need to make sure you have all the equipment that you need every day. You need to make sure that you are squared away every day. Take an inventory of what you have before you leave the house. What am I going to need? That is part of being a responsible adult, much less a police officer. That's just a responsible adult. You need to be that person. Take pride in your appearance. Take pride in how you look. Always remember that people are going to look at you and size you up. Is this person squared away? Can I take advantage of this person because they don't prepare? If you think people don't think that about you as the police, you're kidding yourself, and you picked the wrong profession. Hanging out with your buddies every day, on the weekends, drinking, waking up Monday morning, smelling the clothes on the floor, making sure that they don't stink before you throw them on, those days are over with. Now it's preparation. The weekends are going to be made for recovering physically and preparing mentally for the following week. You need to get ready each and every day for the next day. You will know what you need to do the next day. We're not going to surprise you. Every day you will get instructions on how to prepare for the next day. After that, it is up to you. We don't keep you here and babysit you. We send you home, but when you come back, you've got to be prepared. If you're part of a soccer team, volleyball team, whatever the case may be, basketball team, stop doing that. We appreciate that, that you're still involved in that, but if you get hurt or anything, you're done here. You're hurt off duty, you're finished. Put that stuff on pause. Tell your friends I can't go out this drinking this weekend. I have to prepare for the week. There's no egos here. You guys are all recruits in the police academy. Some of you have military experience, former police experience, 
CSO experience, dispatcher experience, all great, wonderful, we appreciate that. Put that shit aside, keep it here. Let that be the guiding light that pushes you through at the academy. But you know what? Nobody wants to hear about it. Nobody wants to hear about that. Now's the time to stop talking and show us the effort that you can give. Don't tell me what you did when you were a CSO. Don't tell me what you did when you were a dispatcher or when you were in the military. Show me. Show me what you're capable of. That's the challenge I have for you. Nobody cares what you did. You're all equal. Leave your egos at the door. You are recruits in the police academy. You know nothing. Know your place. Your place is of a recruit. That's your place. Unfortunately, that is the bottom of the barrel for you. But that's where you have to start. You know how you get out from the bottom of that barrel? Effort, commitment, all the things that we've been talking about. That's how you get out. There's no shortcuts. There's no half-ass efforts. 100% is what we're going to expect. Everything we do here has a purpose. Everything we do has a purpose. I told you, this police academy has been training recruits for a quarter of a century. We know what we're doing. Everything is related to police work in some manner. Everything. You may not know that, but it is not your job to question that. It is your job just to do. The light will go off over your head eventually, one day, and then you'll think back, now I understand. Now I know why they did what they did. Now I know why the guy said what he said. It will all mean something to you one day, even if it doesn't right now. What I want you to do now is open up your books. I think it's Roman, uh, page Roman numeral two. Right there, right, what is, what is that right there? One. There's your list of requirements of what you need. What I want you to do is flip that page over and read the back of that. <coughs> That embodies everything that we've been talking about. Take a moment. Can you hand me a recruit guide, please? Thank you. Now flip it over, and we're going to talk about some of the things that you need for your first day. On the first day that you report to the police academy, you will park in the parking lot that you parked in today for the power test when you first came in. You will have parking spaces along the roadway. You will back into your parking spot, and you will line up along there. The current recruit class is parking there now. However, you will take their parking spaces when you start the academy. Those will be your parking spaces because you will get here first on that Monday. You will back in and you will line up. You will look out for each other as, as part of your team. If somebody's not parking correctly, you correct them. Do not be afraid to correct each other. If they are not parked in those parking spaces, parking spots along the roadway there, make sure that they are. Your cars will eventually be tagged. We will know whose cars they are. When you report, you will come in that main entrance and you're going to make an immediate right after you pass the double doors. You will walk what's called, onto what's called the street scene. There, you will form up all the way around the street scene and you will wait for further instructions. Arrival time is 0600 hours. That means you will be there at 0545 because we will walk in at 0600 hours ready to go. You need to plan for this. 
You need to plan for traffic. You need to plan for inclement weather, accidents, whatever the case may be. You know where you live and you know the route to get here. Figure out an alternate route to get here just in case. Do not be late. Do not be late. That is unacceptable. Some of the requirements you will need, you will need a plain white button down dress shirt. Let me repeat that. A plain white button down dress shirt. Not a polo, not a polyester uniform shirt. A plain white button down shirt. I don't care where you get it. JCPenney, Kohl's, Walmart, I don't care. Get yourself a plain white button down dress shirt. No logos on it. It should be able to button all the way up to your neck. I don't want it buttoned all the way up to your neck, but it should be capable of that. I don't want any low cut dress shirts or anything like that. Make sure they fit properly. Make sure they are new. Do not open them up that morning though and show up at the academy. We know what a shirt looks like when you take it out of the package for the first time. No, buy it now, take it to the cleaners and have it pressed out professionally. So that way you look good on your first day on the job. That way you make a good first impression. Don't think to yourselves, I already got a white shirt in my closet. Because if you put that shirt on and it's all yellowed because you wore it to your cousin's wedding last year, that is not gonna be acceptable. Not acceptable. Go get yourself two plain white button down dress shirts. Bring them to the cleaners, you're gonna need them. Don't wait till the last minute for this. Preparation is key. We are gonna know when we see you on the first day if you took the time to prepare yourself. I don't want stripes, no logos, nothing. Plain white, I can't be any clearer than that. You need black or blue, navy blue, navy blue. Uniform pants or docker style pants. Black or navy blue. Don't show up with light blue, postal blue, what, navy blue, it is a dark blue. Again, I can't be any more clear than that. If your department has issued uniforms already, you will, can wear your uniform pants if they're black or blue. You can wear those. Other than that, they have to be docker style pants. They will also be pressed out. Do not wear these type of pants. These are BDUs. We're gonna talk about those and when you need those. But you need uniform pants or docker style pants that are pressed out. We should see a crease going down your leg. Again, bring them to the cleaners, have them pressed out. Tell the cleaners what your requirements are and they will do it. You need a plain black belt. Get yourself a police belt. They are known as garrison belts. They have a big belt buckle on the front. Looks like a Santa Claus belt, okay? You're gonna need those. Even if your department doesn't issue it to you, go get one. Go to the uniform store and buy one. You're gonna need it. You might as well get it and they look professional. You're gonna be the police, you should look like the police. Get the right equipment. And while I'm saying that, don't be cheap about this job. Some of you are making more money than you've ever made in your lives. Do not be cheap about this job. Invest in your profession. Invest in the equipment that you need. If I'm telling you, you need this type of belt, go buy that type of belt, even if your department doesn't issue it to you. Your department is not gonna issue, issue a lot of items you're gonna need for the street. Don't go without it just because it's not issued to you. Go buy it. Invest in yourself. Invest in your profession. You're gonna need these items. If you do not have that type of belt, you can wear a professional black leather belt temporarily. Temporarily means we understand the first few days. After that, you better get what we expect you to have. You need 
black shoes or boots, preferably boots. Again, your department should be issuing that. You can wear those boots. They have to be capable of being shined, however. So if you show up with the Oakley canvas type boots that can't be polished, not acceptable. Then you need to go buy the proper boots. They have to be leather and capable of being shined, whether they're boots or dress shoes. They have to be capable of being polished with shoe polish, nothing else. No mop and glow, no tricks, shoe polish only. If you put anything other than shoe polish on leather, you're gonna ruin the boot. Don't do it. They're eventually going to crack and look like crap. Black leather boots with polish on them. If you do not know how to polish shoes or boots, go on YouTube. You can find anything how to on YouTube, including how to polish your shoes. Just look it up. Do not show up on that first day taking those boots out of the box for the first time, thinking that that's good enough. There's oil on them. They put oil on the leather to protect them while they're in storage. That is not polished. We know the difference. You need to clean that oil off and put shoe polish on them. First impression preparation. You need blue or black socks not white socks, and we're going to check. We're going to check blue or black socks. If you're wearing boots, do not wear ankle socks. Wear regular socks. Go out and buy them. Don't shortcut this. Don't think I already have ankle socks, I'll just wear those. No, we're telling you the type of socks we're requiring. Go get them. Get cotton socks. You're going to be wearing boots all day. Your feet are going to sweat. Get cotton socks that absorb the sweat of your feet so your feet don't smell. Okay, listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. And we're gonna check no ankle socks, nothing other than white or black or blue socks. You need a t shirt, a crew neck t shirt, white, not a v neck, a crew neck. Get it a size smaller than what you normally wear. If you're a large, get your t-shirt a medium so it fits snug underneath your shirt. Not that it bunches up and look, makes your shirt look like crap. It should fit snug. It shouldn't be all ruffled around the neck. Again, go buy yourself a new pack of t-shirts. They should be white, not yellowed and stained and disgusting. You should always wear a t-shirt under your shirt. Always. You need a watch, black in color. A regular watch. Go buy one. They're $35 at Walmart. I don't care what kind it is, make sure that it is black in color. No iPhone watches, no smart watches, none of that. Go get yourself a $30 watch. Every recruit is required to wear a black watch. You need to synchronize your time to our classroom time and you need to be on time every day according to that time. Get yourself a watch. Silence the watch. There's no alarms going off. We're gonna have a problem if we hear an alarm going off on a watch. Don't do that. You need to be in proper hygiene every day. Take care of yourself, guys. You need to look good every day. Get haircuts. Look professional. Again, you want to be the police, look the part. That's how it starts. Look the part and then give the effort. Get a professional haircut. Facial hair is not allowed at the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy. You will be required to shave every day. Every day. If you grow facial hair like a monkey, you will shave every morning. Not the night before. Because if you shave the night before, and then you show up with facial hair on your face and tell me that I shaved last night, not acceptable. And we have single edge razors in the office. You will be in the bathroom dry shaving. 
again. And I'm telling you, that takes off more skin than it does hair. You're gonna make that mistake one time only, guaranteed. Gentlemen, you will look professional in your haircuts every day. If your hair is long on top and it gets out of control the minute you do any kind of effort, physical activity, not acceptable. Get it cut. Make sure you are clean. You're going to be required to shower every day. You can't skip that, especially on PT days. Nobody wants to smell you. We're going to be in close proximity a lot. Proper hygiene is important. Ladies, your hair will be in a tight bun on the back of your head, not on top, not on the side. You're not going to look like you just woke up and threw your hair up to run out for Starbucks. You will put your hair in a tight bun every day and you will look professional. No flyaways, nothing. Again, if you've never done that with your hair and you don't know how, look it up. Find somebody who does that can help you with that. Do not overdo the makeup. In fact, why even bother? You're here to be the, pol the police. That's your goal, okay? Don't overdo the makeup. Fingernails will be a natural color or clear. No nail polish, no jewelry. That's for both of you, ladies and gents. No jewelry. Wedding rings are acceptable, nothing else. No, none of the rubber bands, lift strong or anything like that, not acceptable. You will wear a watch and a wedding ring if you are married. There's no earrings, there's no gold necklaces, nothing. You can wear religious implements around your neck, but they will not be showing. I don't care what religion you are, it has nothing to do with me and has nothing to do with this academy. That is for your own personal spirituality. Keep it tucked away. Nobody wants to see it or you won't wear it. Some of the equipment that you are going to need for day one. A spiral notebook or paper to take notes on. Ultimately, we'll be providing you laptops. You can take notes on that. But for the first few weeks, you will not have them. You will be taking notes old school style, handwriting them. You are required to take notes. Per the Training and Standards Board, we are required to inspect your notebook and make sure that you are taking notes. It is required. Take notes. You need black ink pens. Police write in black only. You will write in black only. That's it. You can have multicolored highlighters because you will be doing a lot of highlighting. Part of the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy is a huge educational component. We're going to be spending a lot of time in the classroom before we get you out of the classroom to perform. You need a black backpack or briefcase professional looking don't come here trying to be funny with some colorful cartoonish backpack it's not acceptable professional look professional briefcase backpack preferably black if you're in the military and you have a camo backpack or tan colored backpack that's acceptable we'll accept that but for the most part, keep it black, keep it simple. You should obtain a map of your jurisdiction, of your town. If you've not gotten that yet, go to your police department and get one. Make sure that you have a map of your jurisdiction because by the time you get back, they're gonna expect you to be familiar with that. You need to learn north, east, west, and south. If you don't know that, you need to figure it out. Because when you're on the street and you're driving around, that's how we give directions. You need to be 
situationally aware of where you're at at all times and where you're facing. Get used to doing that now. Get used to that now. Start practicing now in a training environment before you're tossed into this for real. Because by then it's too late. You are responsible with bringing a lunch every day. There's no leaving once you're here. Once you're here, you are here. You are responsible for packing your lunch. Look, here's your opportunity to change some of your lifestyles, okay? If you've eaten crap most of your life, now's an opportunity to prepare your meals and make them exactly how you want. Eat smart, eat healthy. Bring snacks that are going to sustain your energy throughout the long training days. Again, trust me, I know what I'm talking about. We can't restrict what kind of food you bring in there for yourselves. That's your choice. But we're telling you, you're gonna have some long days. Prepare. Make the lifestyle changes that you need to make to conform with our profession. Now's the time to do it. Bring water, sports drinks, soda, whatever you want to drink. Again, we don't control that. What we do control is what enters our classroom. And the only thing that will ever enter our classroom that's capable of being consumed is water. That is it. You can bring water in there, but that is all you're bringing in there. Everything else will go in a locker room that we will provide to you. You'll get breaks, you'll get breaks, and you'll be able to have your snacks during breaks to help sustain your energy. But you will not be eating that in the classroom. We will go over more of that when we get back to the class or when we start class on Monday. Make sure you, recruit, you read this recruit guide. Make sure you read this. This has everything in it that you need to know for the academy. If I were you, I would want to know what could possibly get me kicked out of this academy. That's in here. Make sure you know it. Prepare yourselves. Read this guide. When you come to the academy, there's no electronic devices allowed in our building. No phones, no laptops. We provide that to you. No iPads, no smartphones or smartwatches. None of that. Leave it in your car. Tell your family, your friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever the case may be, you are off limits. You're at the police academy. We'll give you an emergency contact number in case they need to get a hold of you. If something's going on in your life right now, you can tell your supervisors and we'll make sure that somebody's able to get a hold of you on an emergency basis. Other than that, don't bring it. There's no texting, there's no phone calls, nothing. Your focus is on becoming the police and that's it. You don't need any other distractions. Don't bring your phone in. Don't sneak it in either and think I'll just shut it off and hide it. We've had that happen before and we've had recruits dismissed because of that. Don't do it. This is a tobacco free campus. There's no smoking, there's no chew, there's no vaping. None of that is allowed. You're not going to be able to go back to your cars and take a smoke break. So if you do any of that, now's a great time to quit because you're not going to get a chance to do it. Again, you'll get breaks, but you're not leaving the building. You're staying. Some future needs that you are going to need. Wrestling shoes. We're going to be spending a lot of time in the mat room. You're going to be sliding around on the mat room. Running sneakers are not good for that. You need wrestling shoes. Wrestling shoes prevent you from getting hurt, from twisting your knees, okay? Twisting your ankles. Make sure you get wrestling shoes. I don't care what kind of wrestling shoes. Go to play it against sports or whatever and get used ones for all I care. I don't care. Just get wrestling shoes. You need running shoes, good running shoes that offer good stability. You can get CrossFit shoes or whatever, but you need good athletic shoes. Again, don't be cheap. Cheap shoes do you no good. 
Start working on getting your body armor. Your department should be providing that to you, and that has to be fitted for your body. That takes time. Somebody has to come out and measure you for that, and then they have to make it. It's going to take time, and before you know it, you're going to need it for the range when we go to range. Now, we will loan you one if you don't have one yet, but you're not going to want to be wearing those. They've been sitting in our basement, and thousands of recruits have worn those before you. They've sweated in them, and they are nasty. If that's not good incentive for getting your own vest, I don't know what is. Start working on that now. You need a tourniquet for the academy. Make sure you get one. Most departments issue that. If not, buy one. You need your FOID card, your Firearms Owner's Identification card. Make sure you get that if you don't have one yet, if you are an Illinois resident. You need to start working on getting your firearm. We can't tell you what kind of firearm to get. That is up to you and your department, whatever they issue to you. If you are tasked with buying your own firearm, make sure that it is a standard law enforcement firearm. Nine, 45, or 40 caliber. Doesn't matter to us, but make sure it is one of those calibers. A standard law enforcement firearm. Start working on that now. At minimum, we need to know day one what caliber firearm you are going to be shooting because we have to order ammo for your class. You will need shooting glasses and ear protection. You need a long handcuff key and handcuffs. A long handcuff key. The small key comes with your handcuffs. That is garbage. Get yourself a long handcuff key. The small ones are hard to manipulate, especially with gloves on. You need a practice baton and holder. You need a red gun or practice firearm for your holster, the make and model that you're going to be carrying. If you don't have one, go get one from your department. They should have them. They should provide them to you. If they do not, Go buy one. You're going to need it to practice with. You will also need a jump rope. Now, we have jump ropes, but part of our physical fitness, as you will find out, is a cross-training of a bunch of different disciplines in physical fitness. It's made for elevating your heart rate quickly in short bursts, because that's what police do. One minute we're sitting in a car, next minute we're in a foot pursuit chasing somebody. Get yourself a jump rope. Start practicing military time. We use military time here. If you're not familiar with it, figure it out. Go on the internet and figure out military time. We use military time. If you have any kind of medical condition, EpiPens, inhalers, anything like that, you're on any kind of medication, we need to know about it. We need to know about that. You gotta let us know. If you're allergic to something, we need to know about that. Again, you're gonna be in close proximity with each other. Start practicing your phonetic alphabet. A Adam, B Boy, C Charlie. Find out what your department uses, whether they use Alpha Bravo Charlie or Adam Boy Charlie, whatever your phonetic alphabet is at your department. Start practicing that. You need to know that. I'm telling you, this is good preparation for you before you get back to your police departments. You will be that much ahead of the game. Do I have any questions at all? Stand by to be dismissed.